So the new animations are new, so I guess they have some work to do on them. But that's funny, look at that. He's sidestepping and this always looked straight at us. Oh, and now he's walking into a car that's not there. So we are on a new update in the Model Y, but let's go over it because there's some things that I think are gonna be missing that's kind of disappointing. So this is the release 2020.12.2.1 and you can see here those three little lines that used to be right here are no longer there. I cannot pull this down anymore to get to the Easter eggs. It is all gone. But you can still click on your release notes here. We'll go over this briefly with what they actually added. So here you do have it, test the toy box. So this is where your Easter eggs once were. It has been redesigned to make it easier to view and play. Simply scroll through the toys and adjust associated controls as before. Tap the toy box icon from the application launcher. And if you are unfamiliar, the application launcher is just right here. You can go ahead and click on that. Go all the way over to your toy box. And here's everything. Uh, you're going to have your emissions testing, who doesn't love that? You're going to have your tracks, your romance, your sketch pad, your Mars, Santa, as well as Rainbow Road, and some yet to be announced and coming soon. This really just allows them to really be able to expand upon all this toy box and Easter egg stuff because it was getting really clustered up there above the actual car. Next up you have a nearby charging sites. The charging list has been improved to easily filter nearby charging sites based on max power. Simply tap the charge icon on the map and filter by selecting the associated bolt icons. Then we have some dash cam improvements so it's now easier to set up and erase. After plugging in a USB drive, tap control, safety and security, format USB device to format and create the associated folder for dash cam. Note, formatting of the USB will also delete any existing clips. This is nice because before you used to have to do this on your computer and it was just kind of a pain to have to like create the folder and everything. This is like a one-stop shop. I absolutely love this. And to get to it, you just will click down here, safety and security, and among everything else, you have format USB device. You can click on that and it will pop up to be able to format that. So definitely love seeing that. And then we have some backgammon improvements. Uh, they've actually had this in for a couple of the most recent updates, I believe. But basically playing backgammon against your Tesla has now become more difficult. We noticed it was very, very easy. The most difficult level has now been trained with 20 million games. So you can challenge your Tesla to a game by tapping the application launcher, then entertainment and arcade, then backgammon. Note, as usual, the Tesla arcade is only available when your car is in park. So again, application launcher right here, entertainment right here. That will pop up both your arcade and your theater. Um, theater is supposed to be getting a lot of extra cool stuff soon, so we'll wait to see that. But over here in your arcade, you can see you have all these. There's that backgammon. You have Cuphead, Beach Buggy Chest, 2048, Asteroids, Centipede, Super Breakout, Lunar Lander, Missile Command, Millipede, Tempest, and Gravatar. So a lot of really cool stuff, but I hear there's also a lot more games coming, so can't wait to see those. And then after that's just the previous release notes, so we had the traffic light and stop sign control, uh, but that was in one of our last releases. So you can kind of read a little bit about this, but basically it will stop at stop signs or like stop lights and at the stop line, which is really nice, and prompt you to go ahead and either use your gear selector right here to confirm or you can actually just press the accelerator pedal and that will continue on your trip once the light turns green. Now it actually does show whether the lights are green or red here, it just doesn't act on them yet. It's probably just making sure and going through everything to be sure that it is 100% correct on what choice it is taking. But to activate that, you will go into autopilot and you'll go ahead and turn on traffic light and stop sign control. Your car is gonna need to be in park here and then when you turn it on, it'll pop this up and say your traffic light and stop sign control is designed to slow down and stop for visible traffic lights or stop signs that are detected when traffic aware cruise control or auto steer is engaged. Driver accelerator or stop confirmation is required to proceed through all traffic controls, even including green lights, blinking lights, and off lights. Vehicle will continue straight and will not make turns. Make sure you're aware of that. The traffic light and stop sign control feature will not control 
for all intersections. Therefore, you must pay attention and be ready to take immediate action at all times, including braking. When this feature is enabled, the maximum set speed while using auto steer is limited to the speed limit of the road. So those of you that might be used to Tesla's system where you can actually go like five over the speed limit on the most roads, unfortunately with this, you won't be able to. You are stuck at the exact speed limit. And do you want to enable it while in beta? Yeah, you bet. Just make sure you're paying attention. Uh, you have your dash cam viewer, which is really nice. Get to the dash cam viewer, you will just click right up here and go to launch viewer, and that will launch everything for you. And in here, you can actually see everything. you currently viewing the front, but if you want the rear to be your main focus, you tap on that. If you want the right to be your main focus, you tap on that as well as your left. So this is actually kind of dope. This is just a very, very short clip, um, but you can go in here and look at other clips, which is really kind of nice. So we'll kind of go to dash cam here. Um, let's see, we'll go back a little ways. What was I doing on January 5th? So we were doing some testing here, um, but it's really kind of cool how you can see everything just by clicking on the different camera. Now the one feature I really, 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 really want to see, comment down below if you're also interested in this, is I want to be able to export a clip. And it doesn't necessarily need to send it over signal, like cellular or anything like that. I'm totally fine if I click export, it just backlogs that until I get Wi-Fi and then sends it via Wi-Fi. That would be so nice because then I would never have to unplug that USB device. Uh, currently I use an SSD and I just have a USB-C connector that I can plug into my phone if I want to view it or pull it off of that. But it'd be really nice if they could somehow allow that in the car so that I would just press export, put in an email address or something like that, and it would send it once the car is on Wi-Fi. So I don't know, hopefully they can do that in the future. I think with all the enhancements they've done to this though, it's definitely got to be in the realm of possibility. And your out of order supercharger stalls. So much like this one in Lakewood, currently nine of 16 stalls are available, but three of them are out of order. So that is taken into account. So kind of think of it as nine stalls out of 13 are available. Also, one other thing that's not in the release notes is that apparently it will show people actively like walking in front of you and everything. It doesn't just show them always facing your car, moving side to side like it used to. It'll actually show them like a profile view and such like that. So that's something I really want to go out and test. So let's just go ahead and back the car up and see what we can see. Okay, so here we have our test subject, Scott. He's going to walk around and do all kinds of stuff and we're going to see what it recognizes here gonna have to be in drive though let's go ahead and throw on our seatbelt get rid of that error code um, so let's give him the thumbs up and see what it looks like oh first it okay so you can see like the little legs are moving that's funny well, that's really cool I can actually see trash can which is actually a bunch of wheels in there and now it sees a car that's weird. There's no car there. Why is there a car showing up? Now he's sidestepping. We got nothing. Oh, it, eh. it, it knows he's facing forward, but it realizes he's going sideways and it's like tripping it out. No, backward. Oh. Yeah, we're really tripping this thing out. It doesn't know what's happening. I don't know why it's sensing a car. That's weird. Let's creep up a little bit. Okay, so for some reason it thinks there's a person literally right in front of my car. Wow, okay, interesting. So the new animations are new, so I guess they have some work to do on them. But that's funny, look at that. He's sidestepping and this always looked straight at us. Oh, and now he's walking into a car that's not there. Interesting, okay. I don't know where the phantom person is. I'm confused. I, I'm very confused about this phantom person. Let's creep up a little bit more.
So yeah, it's very cool that they're able to show different profiles and people actually kind of like walking towards you or away from you. Before it used to just be like a solid thing that just kind of went by. So that is actually nice. And it does tell us that they are working a lot more on that back end to actually be able to assess are people coming towards you or away from you or what? Now, the one thing I'm really missing in this update though, is the ability to change the wheel configuration on Model Y. So Model S, 3, and X have all included this in the past. I think Model Y, maybe they just haven't yet because it's so new. But recently we switched over the Model Y performance from the 21 inch Uber turbines to a 20 inch TSS from T Sportline. And I've been really happy with them. We tested them out and got a much quieter ride as well as less vibration. So all in all, it's been working out really well, but to be able to change them on the car so that it would recognize that I had 20 inch wheels instead of the 21s, I actually had to fill out through the mobile app a service appointment, but luckily they contacted me before the appointment and said they can actually do it remotely, asked what kind of wheels I bought, and they actually sent an update to the car which changed it to the 20 inch induction wheels, which are not what I have, but unfortunately they don't have like aftermarket options in the Tesla, at least not yet, but the car does now recognize the added range that the 20 inch induction wheels would have given me. Now I just have the TSS, but they should be pretty equivalent. I just want it to recognize exactly what wheels I have on because also I believe that's how they calculate speed and everything. So I wanna make sure that everything is working as it should and the car doesn't think I'm going slower or faster than I actually am. So that is one thing I would really like to see Tesla put into the Model Y, which I'm sure they're doing. They just haven't done it yet. But yeah, let me know what is your favorite thing about this update or have you seen something that we missed because they're starting to kind of sneak some stuff in without actually putting it in the release notes, which I think is kind of awesome because I love having to dig around for stuff. As always though, huge thank you to our channel sponsor, Abstract Ocean. If you guys are looking to accessorize your Model SX3 or now Model Y, much like this one, definitely check them out. I'll link down below and using code Tesla inventory will get you 15% off of your first purchase. My two must have accessories are definitely going to be a center console wrap. We actually went with the satin mat originally and absolutely loved it, but then we actually took it up a notch and it went with the carbon fiber effect shell. So either one of those options though will really help protect that gloss black material that Tesla uses, as well as a matte screen protector. It really helps cut down any glare from the sun, as well as any fingerprints, because it has an oleophobic surface on it that really makes it very easy to clean, along with the Abstract Ocean cleaner here. It's actually got some fluid in there, you spray it on the screen and then you can wipe it. The whole outside is covered in a microfiber. Makes it super easy to keep that clean looking fresh because that is one thing that makes these cars what they are. So we wanna make sure that looks good all the time. As always though, a thumbs up if you enjoyed that video. Go and click here to subscribe here for some other ones and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.